Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena for yet more DIY fun. This week it is finally time to tackle one of the last big eyesores here aboard Athena and that is the companionway. We're going to make new trim, new washboards and hopefully also new opening hinged doors. If you're new to our channel, my name is Mess and this is my fiance Ava. I've spent the last five years doing a somewhat extensive refit on my 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That involved all kinds of fun stuff like building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, gutting most of the interior to make structural repairs and then subsequently rebuilding most of the interior. I also rebuilt the entire deck and painted the top sides. All of that fun is documented in hundreds of videos here on YouTube. Besides looking very well used, the old trim is also cracked. I removed it yesterday and that was a little bit of a struggle because it was both glued and screwed in place. I doubt I would have been able to remove it in one piece if it hadn't already been cracked on the inside. The old trim is teak, which nowadays of course is prohibitively expensive and also very hard to get your hands on. So the new trim is Iruko, which is from everything I've heard and read, a suitable replacement for teak. As you can see, it's, it's fairly light in color, but it should darken a lot over time to kind of a light brownish color like you would associate with teak. So yeah, it is a lot cheaper, it's just as durable, and it's fairly easy to work with. We sailed here to Chichester because there's a super nice guy here named James that has offered us to use his amazing workshop. We'll go there a little bit later, but uh, I was there for the first time yesterday and uh, James helped me make this trim. So uh, yeah, it should be good to go. I do have to make some slight modifications to this for it to fit, but other than that, we're ready to install the new trim. And just like that, the new trim is in place. I think this is a great first step in Operation Spiffy Up the Companion Way. All that's left to do on the trim is to put in the wooden bungs to hide the screws and then just a final light sanding. I have access to James' amazing workshop weekdays after five and all of the weekend. Last night we made the last bit of trim for the companionway and got started on the doors. It is always a ton of fun to learn from someone with a lot of experience and it is a huge help to be able to use all of the super high quality machines at the workshop. This weekend when I've got a little bit more time I'll bring the big camera to the workshop and show you guys around. That'll be fun. But uh, before we can do the final assembly of the new doors I need to double check the measurements of the companionway and I also need to find four small stainless hinges that are hiding somewhere in there. I was dreading having to dig through all of that stuff but the very first box I checked, ta-da, hinges. I made this festive template for the companionway. Now I'm just gonna jot down some measurements and some angles just to make sure that we don't end up with doors the wrong size. I know the angle up here is 90 degrees. Let's just check down here. That is 94. 65.3. The bit of trim we made last night is for the top edge thingy up here. You can see I've got two other pieces in place now. They fit this one over here. I just need to shorten it a little bit, but yeah, I think this is gonna look pretty dang spiffy. All I need to take off of this one is but a few millimeters. I could make this tiny modification here on the boat just using my jigsaw and the angle grinder to clean it up, but uh, yeah, I am going to the workshop later today and there's a perfectly good miter saw there. Armed with the festive template and my final measurements for the door, I was off to the workshop. The day before, we'd already gotten the wood down to a final thickness and width. After a short discussion, I set to work cutting the wood to final length. This also involves getting the angles right. A somewhat fiddly and time-consuming job, but the miter saw was a real lifesaver. Not only for getting the angles right, but also for using the depth step to form the tenon and the shaker-style doors. 
James cleaned up the edges using a little trim router. The result looked really nice. Last but not least, James cut some 6mm perspex for the windows and we got the doors glued with PVA glue and a sprinkle of fix-all to secure and seal around the perspex. And here they are, our new doors. We still have to give them a light sanding. We also have to get some hinges on there and some hardware to actually lock the door when we're not on the boat. But they're coming along nicely. A little bit later today, we can do the final sanding on these. I already have the hinges ready, so we can also start to maybe get those on there. But uh, until then, we have this list of all the other trim we need, and this includes Ava's new spice rack. That's right, that's just letting me use the power tools again, and I'm gonna give it another go at trying to build something. On this piece of paper, I've got all of the exact measurements for the trim we need, and on this one, I've got all of the rough cuts. All of the wood we need for the trim is hiding inside of this Iruko. We just have to kind of liberate it. In terms of color, just notice how much darker this is than this. This is a freshly planed surface, so yeah, this should start looking like this in about a month or so. The process of turning the rough Iruku into trim or doors is pretty simple. First up is add the radial arm saw to cut the lumber down to rough size. We add 100 millimeters to the length to prevent any issues with planar snipe later on. From there, it's on to Mr. Table Saw to cut the lumber to rough width. Here we add 20 millimeters. Then it's on to the jointer to establish two flat surfaces at 90 degrees to each other. Then we'll use those on the thickness planer to bring the wood down to final width and thickness. After that, it's just a matter of cutting the wood down to final length, and then we've turned this curved, rough piece of Iruku into glorious hatch trim. Yesterday, we got all of this Iruku machined to final size. Once all of this is installed aboard Athena, she's gonna look a lot more finished. In this pile is also Ava's fancy new spice rack that we'll get back to a little bit later. Despite having all of that wood ready for installation, we're far from done here at the workshop. Next week we're going to be tackling some curved trim for the forward cabin, which I think is going to be very exciting, but also a few other bonus projects have popped up, like for instance, new washboards. These are our old plywood washboards. Um, I think it's definitely safe to say they have seen better days. There is basically nothing left of the old outer veneer and the bottom corners here have a very rounded shape to them after years of banging around. We've used a little bit of the teak that was left over from the old companionway for etching. We didn't have enough to do all of the edges so some of them are Iruko but I think it'll look great. This morning we've got all that glued in place with a bit of polyurethane adhesive. You may look at the surface of this and go, oh, wait a minute, you haven't used MDF for your washboards, have you? That would be a horrible choice. And although it looks similar, this is not MDF, this is Trichoya. The two do look similar. This down here is MDF and this is the Trichoya. They're also kind of similar in the way they're manufactured in that it is basically just a bunch of sawdust and some adhesive that's mixed and then smushed into a big sheet. But MDF will swell up if it's raining in the neighboring country and it hears about it. Trichoya, on the other hand, is designed for outdoor use. It was James that told me about Trichoya. I'd never heard about it before because, of course, for boats, all we use is basically plywood and, of course, fiberglass. But yeah, this stuff does seem pretty awesome. For structural stuff, like a bulkhead, I would definitely still stick with plywood. But uh, I figured it'd be a fun experiment to try and make the washboards out of Trichoya. It will be about another hour or so before we can sand this to get the washboards finished and ready for paint. So while we're waiting for the adhesive to dry, why don't we check in on Ava and her new spice rack. Ava labeled the wood for her spice rack, spice, spice, baby. Ah, we're so different. <laughs> Now, I know what you guys are thinking. You're scared for me. You're mainly scared for Matt's, but I have this, okay? I got it down. I even made a plan. This has been checked not once, not twice, but many, many times by Matt's. He made me sit down and go over my plan so many times, and here's the final result, okay? I have nine pieces total. I need four at 54 by 6.5, three at 54 by five, and two at 51.6. The next step in the spice rack making step is to measure out all of the pieces, which is also the most terrifying part for me. And then you're just gonna make a little mark, okay? And then square it up. 
Square this baby up. It's time to cut the true real life pieces. This is the part that I'm terrified about because if I don't cut these straight, then we're gonna have a wonky spice rack. And also I've been truly left to my own device. Mans is, <laughs> is busy right now, so it's just me. Wish me luck. Ooh, look at me now, Dad. Look at those straight lines. All the pieces are cut to size, and this is what she's gonna look like when she's all put together. The spices will go in like this, and this front little ledge will keep them in nice and safe. Now, all that's left to do is glue and screw. I'm gonna be assembling the spice rack using screws, but also to make this more difficult on myself, we're gonna be covering the screws with bungs. So right now I'm just trying to figure out the placement of the bungs and it is making my brain melt. So should I figure out these four holes first? Uh, you should figure out all of the holes before you start growing. <gasps> I don't know. I don't know if that's common in the spice rack building biz. Oh, I assure you it is. Okay, so, so, but this one doesn't really matter where I no, place it. No, you can place where you want. Okay. I would maybe go and say the same distance that's here is what I want there. Okay. Right? Yeah. And symmetric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's time to do some real damage and drill some holes. I did some practices on here, but let's just go for it. Maybe I should start on this side because this is the side that's gonna be facing the cabinets. The holes are all drilled and now all that's left to do is assemble it. Now I'm going to pre-drill and then screw the screws in. I just did a practice test and it did not go very well. I split the wood and this is terrifying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw the screw in just a little bit with the power tool and then I'm gonna do the rest with just like a screwdriver because I do not wanna mess this up. First row is in, woohoo! And I made these spacers so I can do the next shelf. Everything is screwed together. I cannot believe it has even gotten this far. I'm so excited. And now all that we have to do is bung it. For design aesthetic, I decided to go with a darker wood for the bungs. Bung, ba bung, bung, bung. Ta-da! I mean, this is by a long shot the best thing that I have ever built. I'm really proud of it. And that is without a doubt has a lot to do with the coaching I got from Mess. But yeah, I am loving this. I love you and I'm gonna keep you forever. We've spent an entire week at the workshop and this, in addition to Ava's spice rack, is the result of our efforts. There is a lot of wood here. This is a ton of trim. Most of it is good to mount. There's some of it that needs just a little bit more trimming, but yeah, most of it is good to go. We're gonna be back in the workshop next week because there are some pieces of trim that we haven't made yet. Like for instance, the side of the nav station here and also a laminated bent beam for the forward cabin. But uh, that's gonna be in next week's video. Ava has already transferred all of our spices into these little containers. These will fit neatly into the spice rack. I've also procured some stainless brackets so we should be good to mount the spice rack. Let's uh, bring out the master spice rack builder. There looks about good to me. The rack is hung and secure. I am loving it so much already. I'm just putting the bottles in now. We got these bottles online and we made the rack to fit 12 across. We even left a little space in between each bottle and I'm gonna sew a little felt pouch that each bottle sits in so when we're sailing they don't rattle around. And I'm also waiting on some labels to come but for now I'm just using a little piece of tape. The first two rows are for spices and this bottom row is for parchment paper except we did make it big enough that if we need to expand our spice collection we'll be able to add more jars here. And like I mentioned earlier this may look very light in color right now but over the next coming months it is going to darken quite a bit. It's going to end up looking a heck of a lot like teak. I think the master spice rack builder has done a fine job with this spice rack. It's very spiffy looking. We've been able to move the spices out of that locker, which means we've got easier access to the spices and we've also freed up a bit of space in there. 
Just to keep an eye on how much this wood darkens over time, the next time we go to the workshop, I'll grab a little piece of scrap and wrap that in some black plastic, because this should darken by exposure to UV. Then in a couple of months, we can compare the scrap piece to the color of the spice rack. My original goal for this week was to install the new companionway doors. And while I have made the companionway doors, as you can see, they're not installed yet. We do need to just do a little bit more trimming to them. But yeah, next week we can install the companionway doors. They'll look a little bit something like this. And it's going to be a lot easier for us to get in and out of the boat with the doors because they're hinged compared to the washboards. Why have both washboards, I know these are the old ones, but why have washboards and also have doors? Well, the doors are going to be great for when we're in a marina or when we're in Anchorage. The washboards are going to be great for when we're actually sailing. For sailing, it is nice to be able to leave the bottom washboard in place and just step over that when you need to get out into the cockpit. Now, in case we take a breaking wave into the cockpit, I don't think the doors are going to be strong enough to withstand that. The washboards are definitely much stronger. But like I said, the hinged doors are going to be much easier to use when we're at anchor or in a marina where we can just pop in and out of the boat without having to fiddle with the washboards. Next week, we shouldn't need to spend that much time at the workshop. The only things we have left are that piece of trim down here, the bent laminated beam in the forward, and then whatever little bit of trimming we need to do to the doors. So hopefully next week, we'll also be able to do a little bit of exploring. And that's going to be the end of this week's video. We are sadly out of time, but uh, we hope you guys will join us and our new spice rack here Ooh. aboard Athena next week for yet more DIY fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See, See you. you. Everything's all cut to size, and this is what she's gonna look like when she's finished. The spices will go there. Now, all that's left to do is glue and screw. Glue, glue and screw. Glue and screw. Hello? Okay. Damn it. Don't put so much pressure on it. Okay. Okay, to make this really hard on myself, I'm going to be attaching it using bongs. This is bongs? So you're saying go nine centimeters from this edge? That would put you here. Nine millimeters is what you want, but yes. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. oh, yep, yep, yep. Thank you. Not that I needed your help. To that, to that, to that, to that. Mmm, <laughs> so smart. <laughs> It'll be okay. <laughs> I hate this thing. <laughs> Just kidding, I love it. So much fun to do DIY. <laughs>